Right, we're going to be looking at this drawing 7-7 of the grade 11 HSE textbook. Um, what they're wanting you to do here is to take this information and we need to do some development drawings. I'm just going to show you the answer of this. Um, a development drawing is basically where you take a look at these little pipes that they've got and you're able to cut them out in order to develop them uh, into a, an object. Um, right, what we need to start out with is to look at their dimensions over here. I'm just going to show those to you quickly. Um, there they are, your dimensions for this thing. Uh, 20 millimeters, 50 millimeters, 20, 60, 30 millimeters going up to that point where that branch pipes uh, intersects over there. And um, yeah, there's point A. Now that point A is very important. They give you point A on this thing. Whoops. They give you point A. You can see it over there. And you'll see that I drew a circle to start with. Why do I have that circle? Well, I need to draw a hexagon. And uh, drawing a hexagon, we know that the radius of a hexagon is the same as the length of the side. If I've got a side length of 20, um, then I'm able to draw that hexagon quite easily. Right, what I've done here is I've drawn my hexagon. And you'll see that I've also labeled all these points on here. All right, that's very, very important. Um, what I would suggest you do is you just label your diagram once you have drawn it. Um, drawing this square over here normally botches people up. Um, on the diagram over here, you'll see that they gave you a length of side of 20 millimeters, but it's at this weird angle, and that's for some reason seems to mess people up. Um, my suggestion to you is, after you've drawn a line going out at that 30 degree angle over there, um, you can then draw a line going out at 60 degrees over there. And what I would suggest you do then is to get yourself a pair of compasses. Let me just try and find you a pair of compasses so I can show you. If you set your pair of compasses to a radius of 10 millimeters, come into the center over here and you can draw a circle. And as you can see, the line lengths, okay, over here, from there to there is going to be 20. Why? Because my diameter of my circle is, um, is 20. And if you draw lines going at tangents to that circle, you'll end up with your square done perfectly over there. Same story over here. Drawing a line out over here. Um, take your pair of compasses set at 10 millimeters. Um, and you can draw that circle in there and drawing lines at tangents at 45 degrees there and there you'll end up with your line lengths of 20. Now, why do we need those auxiliary views? Well, it's practically impossible to get uh, these lines over here without those auxiliary views. Uh, this over here, draw the auxiliary view in. It just helps you to find your way around on the drawing. Right. Um, my numbering, you'll see that I've got number one, two, three, and four going in a clockwise direction over here. I transfer those points over here to one, two, three, and four. Uh, I then come over here and I've got one, two, three, four. Now, uh, you're sort of going, well, it was clockwise over here. Why don't you make it clockwise over here? Actually, since we're doing a first angle orthographic projection, there's the first angle orthographic projection symbol over there. If you look down on your drawing over here, there's the first angle orthographic projection. You actually want to label it in the correct way. Um, I've drawn just lines and points in space over here. Number one, number two, number three, number four. There it is. One, two, three, and four. If I come over here, I take that measurement from my x, y axis. I come down over here. There's number two. You can see number two is closest to the x, y axis. It must be closer to the x, y axis. Number four is the furthest away from the x, y axis. It must be the furthest away from the x, y axis. All right. Um, obviously three, there it is, drops down. Um, when you come across to this view over here, you'll see that I've got one in that position over there, and I'm going in a clockwise direction again, the same as I did over there. One starting over there, two, three, and four. 
Um, why did I start with number one over there? Well, I'd like to show you over here. There we go. There's number one. There's number one. Take it across to new X, Y axis. And there is number one out over there. Furthest away from the X, Y axis. All right, there. Take it across there. Number three over here is closest to the X, Y axis. Coming across, there's number three closest to the X, Y axis. And you can see where you get number two and four from. If you look at that, number two and number four, they should be the same distance away from the X, Y axis there and there. Right, there's your numbering. Okay, that's just uh, for your ease of understanding as to how to go about numbering these things. I always start with my number one up at the top there, going through to two, three, four in a clockwise direction, knowing that number one is over there, two, three, four, number one at the top there, number two going in an anti-clockwise direction, three, four, and over here, number one, two, three, and four. You can see I'm going in a clockwise direction. So clockwise, transfer, anti-clockwise, transfer, number one over there, and clockwise over there. If you can get that down, it will help you, especially when you start getting more complicated drawings um, later on. Okay, what we've got here are two pipes going into each other. And you can see that this pipe is intersecting with this hexagonal, the square pipe is intersecting with this hexagonal pipe. Um, what we need to do is to find out where the curve of interpenetration is on this pipe. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? On this drawing, it's very, very easy. I'm going to say, I'm going to take a line coming out from point two over there, and I'm going to take it out at that angle over there, I'm going to see where point two intersects with this side over here, AB. All right, there's side AB. And I'm going to take a line going up from where that intersection is, going up to where that line two would intersect. I'm going to label that point number two. Now, there is something very, very important about that little section of line that you've got over there. Where am I standing in this drawing? I'm standing over here. I'm looking across at it. Therefore, that line that I'm seeing would actually be done in hidden detail. If you can get that into your heads, that will make life a whole lot better. I'm going to do a hidden detail line just for you right now. Hidden detail going to point two. I've got a line that is going to go from where point two is, going up to where it meets up with point one over here, see point one intersects with this line A. There's point one intersecting with line A over there. Okay, so I've got a line that needs to go from point two up to where it intersects with point one. And it is on the other side, so it would be hidden detail. I've also got a line that is going to go from point two down to this point over here, which links up with three, okay? And that is also on the other side. So there's a point three over there. Uh, sorry, point three down here, point three. There's point three coming across and I'll have a point three over there. And that would be also hidden detail. All right, and you're going to say, well, that was a bit silly. Why did I do hidden detail when I've basically got exactly the same story happening on this side? There is point four, coming across, links up with the side AF. And I'm going to do a line going up from that point over there, going up, and you'll see that it links up with exactly the same point as two. But since I'm standing on this side, I can see line four going to that point over there. So I'm going to be able to draw that line four as a solid line. And it covers over my hidden detail going to point two. Now, that's all very nice in this particular drawing, but later on you're going to find that there are drawings where these lines are not going to be solid lines um, covering over all the hidden detail. You're going to have to find the hidden detail, and that's why I did that little story of put yourself in the picture and see what lines you are seeing as dark 
and what lines you're going to see as hidden detail. You'll find that very, very useful later on. Okay, once we've got that, our next step is to draw the development of, I'm going to start with this little branch pipe over here. I'm going to take my a line out over here, coming out, let me just do it as a construction line in red. Okay, I'm going to take a line out from there, I'm going to take a line out from there, and I'm going to take a line out from there. Okay, once I've got that in place, I'm going to draw a line, just a construction line coming out there, and I'm going to say, all right, I've got lengths of side over here that have a true length. Now, this little piece of line over here is not a true length, but my piece of line one, two over here is going to be a true length in this view over here. My auxiliary view, I've got a true length. Why would I have a true length? Because if you look at it, one, two in this view is parallel to an x, y axis over there. So that length over there on the auxiliary view is a true length. I'm going to label this number one at that point, and I'm going to transfer one to two onto my drawing. That point over there, I'm going to call it two. I'm going to say two to three. You can see it's that length. It's the same length because it's a square. Place that down over there, and I end up with three. I'm going to take this length over here from three to four, take that across, take that off over there, three to four. And that's where some of you stop, but actually I've got four going back to one over here. Okay, so don't forget that, four going back to one. I need to have four sides on this square pipe. That would be number one. One, two, three, four going back to number one. What is the length of this line one? There it is, length of line one. You can see where I got that from. Length of line one is over there. And I can draw the same thing in on that side over there. You'll see that that is the shortest length that I've got over here. So that's why I want to put it onto this diagram over here. Um, line number two. Okay, you can see the length of line number two. It's actually the longest one. I'm going to draw a line going from line number two all the way up to the top over there. And what other line has the same length? You'll see line number four goes all the way to the top there as well. So I go across to line number four and I draw a line all the way to the top. Line number three, you can see over there, and that is just under the top. There it is going up. And once I've got that in place, I can now draw lines going from one to two, from two to three, from three to four, and from four going back to number one. Right, don't forget to draw a line going across there. And you should label this view as the branch pipe or development of branch pipe, you can label that over there. Okay, the next video that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to get the, um, the main pipe development drawn out over here.